Hello and welcome to Lost Love Chronicles. In today's story we have Mike, who is a no-nonsense guy who has married Kathy, who is hiding a secret that will wreck their married life. My name is Mike, and I'm 33 years old. Not too long ago, I went through a divorce with Kathy, who is 32 years old. We didn't have any children during our marriage. Kathy had a previous marriage to a guy named Jose. While I wouldn't call myself friends with Jose, I did know him because we had worked together in the past. At that time, I was employed as a mechanic at a local garage, while Jose was an expert in paints. His tenure at the garage was relatively short-lived, and he moved to a different city once his marriage with Kathy ended. Kathy happened to be the daughter of the garage owner, so she used to visit the garage quite frequently. She had married Jose a few years before I joined the garage, so I didn't have much interaction with her during their marriage. However, shortly after I started working at the garage, Kathy and Jose got divorced. I'm usually a private person, so I didn't pry into the reasons behind the divorce of the garage owner's daughter. Kathy was a beautiful woman. After Jose left the garage, Kathy began to visit the garage more often. We eventually started talking when she brought her car in, after denting it on a pole. I couldn't help but ask her how she had managed to do that, and she simply said she lost control of the car. I offered to fix the dent for her, and she was grateful for the help. As time went on, Kathy started coming to the garage more frequently, and we began to enjoy each other's company. One day, she surprised me by asking if I could drive her to a local open-air movie since her car was with her father, who happened to be out of town. I was a bit uncertain about her intentions, unsure if she genuinely wanted to spend time with me or just needed a ride. Nevertheless, I agreed to take her to the event. Post my shift I went to her place and picked her up. She sat beside me and I was a bit taken aback. I thought that she would sit in the back seat. Being a shy person, I could not start a conversation with her. She initiated the conversation by telling me to relax. She asked if I sat beside a woman in a car. I shook my head saying no at the first time I am driving alongside one. When we arrived at the open-air movie, it was rather empty, with only two cars, including ours, in the vicinity. I asked her if her friends will be here. She looked around and asked let's wait. The movie started and it was a 1990 movie ghost. The surrounding was getting dark and I was getting anxious. Her friends are not here. I am alone here with her. Then the iconic scene came up. Demi Moore's character Molly starts the clay pottery scene. Patrick Swayze character Sam Wheat comes from behind and kisses her. The car had the AC running but it was getting difficult to stay inside with Kathy. Without a word Kathy came closer and kissed me, I was surprised and wanted to say something but Kathy shut me up and in the next few hours we got intimate multiple times. By the time we were done it was late night and Kathy looked exhausted. So, I drove to her place to drop her back. She managed to get out and came back to my car and gave me her number and asked to pick her up after my shift next day. The next day I picked her up and asked where does she want to go, she said wherever I want. I took her back to my place and drilled her, till I was exhausted. There was not a lot of talking between us. She woke me up after a few hours and asked if I would be her boyfriend. I never had a girlfriend and had no clue with relationships. I was only son of my parents, did not have a lot of friends and never had a girlfriend. For me this was a dream come true. I agreed and for the next two months dated Kathy. One fine day I was called by the owner of the garage Ronald, who happens to be Kathy's father. I met him and he asked me if I will marry his daughter. I did not know what to say. I never thought about marriage and had no clue about relationships. I told Ronald that I never had a girlfriend and had no clue about marriage. 
He laughed and said that when he got married, he had the same level of experience. So, I said yes and Ronald called Kathy and asked if she would marry me. She said yes and we were getting married. I called my parents and they were happy for me. So, we got married and I moved in with Kathy. It is one thing to date someone and it's totally different living with someone. I don't know about relationships but I know how to be nice to someone when they are nice to you and how to be bad to someone who is bad to you. My parents were the benchmark for my understanding of marriage. It is a two-way street. Be respectful to your partner, love them and ensure that they don't feel left out. In all that ensure that no one disrespects you. Know your role in a relationship. A marriage is successful only if both partners contribute to their roles with equal dedication. Everything was going fine and we were happy with each other. However, everything was not fine at the garage. Some of my colleagues were not really happy with me getting married with Kathy. I know they were jealous cause I married the owner's only daughter. I did not marry Kathy for money. She was single, I was single and things worked out and we got married. Six months into our married life, Kathy asked if she could join some work as she is bored at home. I agreed and she joined the garage as a social media marketing person. She was supposed to make sure that the garage was famous online and gets more business. Son there were some great posts on social media and the revenue was increasing. She kept talking to me about her work at home and things were good. She one day asked me if all the mechanics could pose in a group looking like Spartans from the movie 300. I did not understand. She said all the guys standing only in their pants and no shirt. I found that idea vague and Kathy said that all the guys are jacked and will bring some glamour to the garage. On the day of the shooting, I got a call from a client who was stuck in a highway about 150 miles from the city. I quickly drove to him. I came back and the shoot was over. The guys seemed pretty happy. They were giggling when I returned. One of them said they enjoyed the shoot. The next day I saw the post. I was livid. My wife dressed as a Hooters waitress, with even more smaller clothes, was rubbing herself with another girl. They were oiled up and it was more of a scene from an 80s B-grade movie. One of the guys was holding the rainbow flag. I called Kathy and screamed at her to remove the post. I hung up and called Ronald and asked if he knew. He said he does not go on social media. He was livid when he heard and asked Kathy to remove the post. Kathy removed the post, but the damage was done. It was shared all over the internet and our regular customers posted boycott comments and said that they will never come back. Our garage was a place for traditions and now it is a weird circus. Kathy had destroyed the business with one post. I sat Kathy down with my father-in-law. We both screamed why did she do it? Why did she pose with the guys and why the rainbow flag? What she said was dreadful. She said that she is not straight and never wanted to be with a man. I was shocked. She said that her father knew. I turned to Ronald. He was quiet. I could not believe it. I said that you loved every moment we were intimate. She said she faked. I asked then why did you not say it, why did you get married to me? She said that her father threatened to harm himself if I did not marry you. I felt cheated and my head was spinning. I sat down the chair and stared at the ceiling. I screamed so Jose divorced you cause he knew. Kathy got upset that she did it cause she could not bear to be with me and could not let her father blackmail her. I asked Kathy to leave. She reluctantly went out. All the abusive words that I ever knew I hurled all of them at Ronald. I was about to land my right hand on his nose but I held back at what he said. 
He got up with tears in his eyes and said what would you have done, I wanted her to be who she is, a woman, with her husband, who is a man. I know what he must be going through. I hugged him and said that you need to let her go. We sat there in his office at the garage and kept discussing what to do now. He told me that he always saw me as his son and that is why he wanted Kathy to marry me. I told him to let it go and let Kathy find her path and let fate take its course. Next day I went back to my home and Kathy was waiting. She walked to me and said that she is sorry for lying to me. I did not talk to her. I packed my bag and left the house. Ronald and I met a lawyer. I told the lawyer about my situation and I told him that I would not be paying my wife anything. He was surprised that I came for my divorce discussion with my father-in-law. Once I was done Roland asked me to leave him with the lawyer. I walked out and left. Later that week Kathy was served. I did not expect to call me and she did not. We met at the court a few weeks later and got divorced. She hugged me and whispered in my ear that I was really good. I ignored and walked away. I had left my job at Ronald's garage and started working at a different garage. Few weeks later, Ronald called me and asked to meet him at the garage. I met him in the evening. We sat down and he poured his favorite in two glasses. I was asking him, how are things going? He was about to speak when a stone flew into his office. He smiled and said let's check this out. Outside, Kathy was throwing stones at his garage and I was surprised. She was screaming at Ronald and even tried to take a swing at him. She was held back by some of the guys and Ronald called the cops. Kathy was arrested and the cops took her in. I asked Ronald, what is going on? He said that he threw her out of the house and removed her from his will. He then jokingly said I don't drink Bud Light. I said he should not have done that. His question was straight, he said what would you have done? Ronald then said people have every right to choose their path, I forced Kathy to choose my path. I was wrong. Now, I have chosen a path, if she is not happy with it, so be it. I too am entitled to choose my path. My way does not align with Kathy so she is free to go her way. I cannot force Kathy to choose a straight life. She cannot force me to choose my heir. Ronald then asked me if I can take care of the garage for him. I did not say anything. He said that he has made me the sole heir to all his assets. He apologized for pushing Kathy to marry me and apologized as I became a victim of his desires. I later joined Ronald at his office and now after two years I sit at Ronald's seat and I am married to a beautiful woman and have a son with her. Kathy never returned and I did see her once on a video complaining about how her father kicked her out of her inheritance. I blocked her everywhere. Ronald is a lot like a father figure to me and my family. My son loves him like a grandfather and we spend some of our weekends at this place enjoying barbecue and Coors Light. Dear listener, if you have reached this far please click on the subscribe button. It will be a great help.